So, yeah. welcome everyone, and I'm very, very happy to see so many of you here today. Um, I hope you are all doing well regarding the circumstances. Um, my name is Anna Holthaus, and I'm the project coordinator of the MSP Institute working on gender and chemicals. The MSP Institute is a small charitable association based in Berlin, Germany, and dedicated to supporting high quality dialogue and collaboration among stakeholders, stakeholder participation and good governance. And we have been working on gender and chemicals since 2017 with support from the German Federal Environment Ministry and have been active in the SICOM process since then. Uh, and my colleague Minu Himati um, is the co-founder and associate of the MSP Institute. She is advising the project and will facilitate our webinar today. So before we begin with our new webinar series, I want to highlight that all recordings of our six webinars from last year are available online at our project um, website, which is gender-chemicals.org. And there you will also find uh, a new and very focused two-page summary of this webinars with the title Gender Gaps and Gender Specifics and how to address them in Psych and Beyond 2020. So feel free to have a look. Mm. And now let's start with our new webinar series, um, 40, 45 minutes for gender in sectors. And we invite you to join us again once a month for 45 minutes on gender equality and its interconnection to the multisexual world of chemistry. And every last Tuesday of the month at 2 p.m., um, there will be, be again the opportunity to learn from experts and to discuss and to brainstorm together uh, how we can create gender just and chemical safe sectors. And today is webinar one on gender and chemicals and toxicology. Mm, next month, we will discuss gender and chemicals and cosmetics. In April, we will focus on gender and chemicals and science. After that, we will have a look into the textile sector. And the last webinar in June will be on gender and chemicals in agriculture. Uh, I'm sorry. Thanks. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so please note that we are recording this session and we will make it available on our gender and chemicals website and at our YouTube channel. Yeah, and with that, I now hand you over to Mino. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anna, um, and a very warm welcome to you all from my side as well. Our, if you can, click, yeah, our agenda today is pretty simple. We have a presentation by Dr. Cinzia La Roca uh, on gender and chemicals and toxicology. We will. I have a few minutes afterwards for uh, Q&A and questions to Cinzia. And then we wanna try something new and that is to brainstorm with you a little bit. Uh, and we use a mural to do that, to brainstorm on the question, how we could improve the sector and what would be advancing gender ma mainstreaming in toxicology. So we just wanna uh, gather some ideas and try that. We will hear the presentation, which is about 15 minutes and then open for questions. We will use the chat function and you can also raise your virtual hand to keep things interesting. Zoom has changed the location of finding your hand to raise it. It's now under reactions at the bottom of your Zoom window. And that's also where you find the chat uh, function. And uh, if you do have a technical problem, please use the chat to tell us. We'll try and help. We're not experts, but we can try. If your connection isn't so good, try switching off your video. Otherwise, particularly in the discussion, do try keeping it on. It helps us build a sense of community. Thank you very much. Now, allow me to introduce our guest speaker for today's session, Dr. Cinzia La Roca. She's a biologist and senior researcher at the Center for Gender-Specific Medicine, Istituto Superiore di Sanità, the Italian National Institute of Health in Rome, Italy. Since 1990, she has been working as an expert in human biomonitoring studies including case control studies involving chemical related diseases and biomarkers of gender related effects. Cinzia is the project leader of the European Life Persuaded project on Celid and bisphenol A, bisphenol A biomonitoring in Italian mother child pairs and the Ricerca Finalizzata National project funded by the Italian Ministry of Health 
This is focusing on an integrated approach to evaluate children's agricultural pesticide exposure and health outcome. Jinxia is an expert for human risk assessment to OECD on endocrine disruptors testing and assessment, to FAO, WHO on food additives, and the Committee on Food Safety of the Italian Ministry of Health. Cinzia, we are honored and very happy that you are able to join us today. You have the floor. Yes. Um, uh, thank you. Um, good evening, uh, of all. And uh, I, I have to thank uh, the organizers to invite me in this webinar and to give the opportunity uh, to present uh, the toxicology issues uh, uh, for gender and chemicals. Next slide, please. Toxicology is defined uh, as the study of the adverse effect of chemicals uh, on living organisms. Toxicity can result from adverse cellular, biochemical and, or macromolecular changes such as uh, protein synthesis, DNA damage, or by modification and alteration of physiological mechanism. Chemicals may affect one or more target organs and one or, and one or more uh, systems. Next slide, please. The adverse, uh, next slide, okay. Thank you. Uh, the adverse effects are determined by several factors, the chemical and physical property of substances, the dose that is the amount of substance administered at one time, and generally the higher the dose, the more severe response. The response, the dose response relationship is a fundamental concept in toxicology since it correlates exposure and the spectrum of um, the induced effects. Exposure conditions concern the root and duration of exposure, the mixture of chemicals. And finally, response of a host, genetic susceptibility, metabolism, excretion, age, sex, and gender are very uh, relevant. But next, uh, next slide, please. Uh, in particular, it has to be considered the age, uh, sex, and gender. The age is the age because is um, the time of exposure is uh, critical uh, during the life stage. The, the same uh, dose of uh, the same chemical can can have um, um, different effects uh, according to the the um, different uh, life stages, and the effect can uh, manifest themselves when the exposure of course or later in the or later stages. Sex is, link, uh, is linked to our chromosome pattern and gender is uh, include uh, socially constructed uh, roles, behavior, activities, and can determine a different uh, exposure. Next slide. Uh, the physiological uh, differences between male and female can determine on different sex susceptibility and the response to chemicals as a consequence. For example, difference in body composition because of fat percentage in women is greater than men with implication for kinetics, particularly of fat soluble organics. And the fat in the body is more present in the visceral area in men, but in the lower part of the trunk in women. And this different distribution gives rise to a different metabolic risk. The, the difference in, in, in reproductive system is the more easy to understand because um, men and women have a, a different sex hormone or regulated in a different way and have a different reproductive organs. Uh, but the metabolism in particular is more relevant because different metabolic function lead to a sex specific response to nutrient, food and chemicals. Women have a greater ability to absorb and metabolize uh, fatty acid than men and, uh, the, and the, uh, the metabolic enzyme expression in the liver that is uh, the more the well-known demorphic organ is different between sex. And uh, uh, um, recently, we uh, noticed that also the uh, gut microbiota uh, have a, a relevance 
uh, to, to determine different uh, um, exposure and different response because uh, the gut microbiota influences the, absor the absorption and the metabolism of the xenobiotics, but show re sex related differences in, in pattern of the um, microorganisms. Um, next, please. The, the environmental uh, conditions uh, such as familiar, economic, educational, and social context may differently influence the exposure in men and women. In fact, they spend different amount of time at home, community, at workplace, and they have also uh, different eating habits. So diet is uh, um, important. Women, for example, have breakfast, they consume more fruit and vegetables than men, and conversely, men consume uh, wine, beer, food with high, high protein content more often than females. And this can strongly influence the exposure to the dietary factors. Also in children, lifestyle may lead to different exposure conditions. Uh, boy and, uh, and girls, uh, even at early uh, age, have a different pattern uh, of playing and behavior. For example, boys spend more time playing on the floor, and so they have a, um, um, are more exposed to soil and dust uh, than, uh, than girls. And uh, uh, for the diet, they more, uh, boys are uh, attracted by junk food and sweet beverage than girls. Therefore, gender is a crucial aspect in human, but also in animals, considering the different role and behavior in social groups. So, uh, all chemicals that uh, uh, can affect the, um, the neuro behavior. Uh, um, take into account uh, the, um, the, the gender in, in animals. Next, please. The goal of toxicology is to study the effect of chemicals on organs, on system, and the mechanism of action. And uh, uh, in toxicology, we use uh, in vitro and in vivo studies, uh, ex vivo and silico studies, or epidemiological studies. The OECD guidelines report the standard method for determination of uh, health effects. But the final aim of toxicology is to contribute to the assessment of the possible risks of chemicals to human health. Next, please. Uh, some consideration, the um, toxicological, toxic, toxicological and epidemiological studies should be fostered by taking into account the inclusion of females and males, so women and men, gender aspect, the interaction, the interaction between age and, um, and that sex or critical life stages and that sex, adequate the simple size, and the use of disaggregated data. Next, please. Um, I, I'd like to present the results of the project Life Persuaded, entitled Stalate and Bisphenol A Biomonitoring in, Child, in Italian Mother uh, Child Pairs, Link Between Exposure and Juvenile Diseases, uh, funded by the European Commission. In this project, we measured the children exposure in Italy to a tilexil phthalate, and the results shows that showed that higher levels um, in boy compared um, to girls for the uh, sum of the metabolites and for each secondary metabolites of the tilexil phthalate. The level increased with age in boy and in girls. Moreover, the relative, the relative metabolic rate of the conversion from, from first to second metabolite was higher in boys compared to, girl, to girls, probably due to the different uh, activity of uh, the specific uh, metabolic enzyme. Uh, this is the CYE, uh, 
CIP two C nine is uh, uh, an enzyme belonging belonging to the uh, cytochrome uh, family. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, moreover, in the, the, the project, um, performed um, an in vivo study um, by using uh, immature male and female rat rats in a uh, in a state in a uh, stage um, of life com uh, comparable to the to, to the children in biomonitoring studies and uh, um, used also the and the dose level uh, derived uh, from uh, from the biomonitoring studies so the animal and human study are performed in parallel the results of the um, the um, uh, the animal study uh, show that uh, uh, show different uh, um, target uh, in male and female because for male we noted we measured a pubertal delay and for female uh, thyroid tissue alterations. Next slide, please. The enrolled subject in the project. Uh, were asked to fill in a questionnaire on lifestyle and food consumption habit. From the analysis of the data, we found that the higher levels of talate are associated with the use of disposable plastic, use of plastic containers in microwave, and playing many hours a day with plastic toys, including electronic toys. Um, but the lower levels of talate have been measured in people who practice um, physical activity. Next slide. From the project uh, um, message from the project to general population, because from the results of the association between uh, exposure and lifestyle determinants stems 10 practical tips to limit the exposure to plasticizer uh, addressed to the population. And uh, next slide, please. And um, also from the project, we have a, a message for risk manager because we have we have derived some health-based guidance values relevant in risk assessment, such as the benchmark dose and the, re and the reference values. But both the, the values show a different uh, um, number and different uh, um, num number for males, rats, and female rats, and uh, for girls and boys. Next, please. The gender medicine, or rather gender specific medicine, is a medical approach aimed at analyzing the difference deriving from gender in several aspects, including, the to including toxicology. The gender specific toxicology is um, um, uh, is included among the scientific activities in the prevention and health area of the Center of Specific Medicine at the Italian National Institute of Health. Next, please. Thank you a lot for uh, your attention. Thank you very much, Cinzia, for this overview. Um, this has been brief and very focused. Thank you very, very much uh, for this presentation. Um, I'd like to open it for comments and questions from colleagues in the audience. Um, so um, you can type a question in the chat, but you could also uh, raise your hand. We're 24, so we could uh, work with uh, asking questions directly. Uh, please feel free. Uh, we have a few minutes for Cinzia to answer questions. And I see Alex, Alexandra Cartable. Go ahead. 
Thank you very much for giving me the floor. Thank you for your great presentation. It was very interesting. Thanks a lot. I have like two questions, but they are kind of linked. So do you think that the results of your research are being somehow translated into policymaking? So, and also um, we, we often read a statement, it says that this and that has been tested with the average male 70 kilo person. Um, so is this still the case or is, is there a difference in risk assessment is um, taking gender and sex related um, factors into account? Because I was looking for a source on that for a long time and I asked five experts and nobody could help me with that. So I hope that um, you could shed some light on this. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Uh, Cynthia, can you enlighten her as regards these two questions? I'm very interested as well. Um. If I well understood the um, yeah the um, we we try to to calculate some uh, uh, some uh, uh, values uh, for uh, the risk assessment differently um, for for uh, boys and girls and for uh, uh, males and female rats, but generally. Uh, in uh, the uh, this uh, uh, this not uh, uh, very uh, so so present in the in the risk assessment and the in the general evaluation of the substance is a um, um, a new the, there are new effort to uh, to address the risk assessment. Uh, um, uh, on the part of uh, the sex and gender, we have to um, we 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 perform several effort to demonstrate this that uh, gender and sex are uh, um, two relevant aspects to be taken uh, into account. But in the in the general uh, uh, risk assessment. Uh, um it, it's not so uh, so practice um, and uh, the great effort uh, we are um, is uh, is uh, made in the risk assessment to differentiate the, the age because uh, the effect on adults is uh, mm -hmm. can be very different from the effect in um, in, uh, in children, for example, and uh, uh, in these uh, in these years, uh, uh, great effort uh, um, has been uh, made in this uh, in this field. Thank you, uh, Alex. Also asked if your research is. Uh, informing policy making in any way. Now, this is a European funded project, Italian government funded project. Um, how is your is the results of your research informing policy making? Uh, um, the, uh, the, the, for example, the Life Persuaded the project made the great effort in involve, uh, involving the uh, the police maker in, um, for example, in the workshop or in in, in the in uh, its uh, in the, uh, conference that we organized, so they are informed uh, about this uh, uh, difference. We also publish our results in uh, peer-reviewed uh, um, um, journals and. Um, uh, informed that the European Commission uh, through the, uh, the the reports of the project, but uh, uh, you know that uh, this is a a, a long process to 
to introduce a new uh, a new evidence a new evidence is a, is a long process as we have to take to to have time to do it but the um, yeah the 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 policy makers are informed about this uh, our our results mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you very much, Cynthia. Hans Christian, you also have a question or a comment. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I, I would a little bit uh, rephrase the whole, I think this is a very important point and, and, and thank you very much, Cynthia, for your, for your presentation. Um, and I, I may rephrase it a little bit more technical, but I think it's, it's still the very same point. My, I have some past in regulatory risk assessment and I have been ecotoxicologist and, and the paradigm we, we have there in, in regulatory risk assessment that, that the environment uh, simplified is protected if every species is protected. And I know that the, that the analogy to, to human risk assessment or human health risk assessment is that if the, the human health is protected, if you protect every individual and I think in that sense, um, it's of course highly, highly um, relevant if you know, um, or we use these assessment factors and so things like this, this and, and all the time we have to check again and again if, if we protect water fleas and fish and, and frogs and so on, if, if whole, whole uh, ecosystem is protected. And in that case, the translation for me would be, have we seen enough or if we see new, new differences, not only gender differences, but also gender differences in, in, um, in uh, sensitivity, are they sufficiently covered by what we are um, doing in regulatory risk assessment? And, and I think that would be the first entry point for your um, results to, to make it policy relevant or regulatorily relevant. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with you, uh, but uh, I added that also that uh, we, we are able to protect the population when we are able to protect the more, um, the more susceptible and vulnerable, vulnerable groups. So if uh, we protect the vulnerable groups, we then we protect no uh, uh, as a consequence we are, we will uh, able to protect the general population mm -hmm. and uh, this is a um, uh, a big point in the in the human risk assessment mm -hmm. so not, not only uh, to preserve every every organism organisms, but uh, in a point of view of a global uh, number, uh, we have to protect uh, the, the susceptible uh, group and sex and gender demonstrate this, this, this uh, aspect, the relevance of this aspect. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cynthia. Uh, and I uh, was wondering if there's another question. If not at the moment, then um, I'd like to invite you to join us in a little brainstorming. And uh, Anna, if you could copy the link into the chat. So the only thing that you would need to do is to click on the link that Anna puts in the chat. That takes you to a virtual whiteboard or flip chart uh, on Mural. And it will ask you if you want to enter as a visitor. So you don't need to register or anything. You don't even need to put your name. Just enter as a visitor. You will be assigned a random animal. So uh, you might be a frog uh, or a whale or a butterfly, whatever. Um, so I invite you to, to join us there. And you can see that uh, we want to brainstorm with you about how to improve the sectors that we're discussing. And on the first board, if you zoom in, uh, you can just do this by your touchpad or with your mouse. Uh, and you zoom in to that first board where it says webinar one, gender and chemicals and toxicology. 
um, I'd like to invite you to put your thoughts on how to improve uh, the, the, uh, how to advance gender mainstreaming in the sector of toxicology. And the way to do this is to just double click on that board and then it will give you what we call a sticky or a post-it note like we use in a real workshop. Yeah, you're getting it. Just double click and it gives you a sticky. And then you can type in what you want to say. Yes, you can make them bigger. And yes, you can move them around. And yes, you can change their color. So play with it as you, as you like. Uh, you can't really destroy anything because we kind of saved uh, the stuff that we put there already. So uh, don't be shy. And uh, if you could share your thoughts on what could be done to advance gender mainstreaming in toxicology, we'd be very grateful because that's what we're collecting. You might also want to think about who should be doing what. You have people like Cienzia doing research. What should they do? But what should the government do? What should the private sector do? What should NGOs do? What can consumer groups do? So there's other actors that we could think about, or the media. I was just thinking about the media when uh, uh, Tensia was talking about practical tips, uh, how to avoid uh, exposure uh, or dangerous exposure. So, you know, who could be doing what to make this sector more gender responsive or more gender just? So now I have to look a little bit because we want to see what we're collecting. And we want to collect over the course of this, at least this half year, the ideas that you have to improve different sectors in terms of gender mainstreaming. Just double click to create a sticky and add your thoughts or question, whatever it is that you'd like to share. Made a mistake. Interesting, thank you. So, and if you put a sticky and you don't need it, you can also delete it, but never mind. Uh, if you feel you're making a mess, it doesn't matter. We can clean it up afterwards. <laughs> Nothing can be destroyed here or, or not easily. <laughs> Thanks very much. Uh -huh. So I'd like to have a little look. I'm gonna make this a little bigger. Okay. People are still adding things. Would be interesting to have instead of, of animals, um, specific groups of humans. Um, mm -hmm. So we have here what I tried to explain <laughs> in an um, ecotoxicological risk assessment. Uh, we, we can ask ourselves, do we protect sharks? and owls and fish and so on. <laughs> That's the animals we are right now on the board, yeah? <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. it clarifies the diversity. Yeah, yeah. It will be interesting then to see what we choose to describe our diversity, our hair color, our height, our weight, where we are, if we like to swim or if we like to eat fish. Yes. So. <laughs> So, but let's have a look uh, at what, what you shared there. 
um, also wanted to give uh, Cinzia the opportunity uh, to comment uh, if she wishes. Um, there's a question in the pink one. It says, uh, is there an international database on gender data and toxicology? So that's a concrete question and Cinzia might know. Um, now I have to zoom in. Yeah, some of you talk about awareness raising of medical experts and risk assessment uh, and uh, learn more about how physical activity impacts effects of exposure and educate people about it. So again, this is around awareness raising, social media campaigns for gender medicine. I believe many people don't know what gender medicine is yet. Um, and uh, it would be good to make this more known. And there is uh, post-its around uh, research, more gender aspect in academic teaching of toxicology. So uh, if you study it, you will have to learn about it and get data on gender and vulnerable groups, responsiveness into the risk assessment. Academia and regulatory assessors should enhance their interaction to quicker and more outcome oriented be considered result, research results in regulatory risk assessment procedures so that the, the new knowledge enters into, into policy making more quickly, right? So, um, Cynthia, I'm wondering if you can answer the question that's in the pink sticky on mm -hmm. that post is if there's an international database on gender data and toxicology, is there? Um, do you do you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay, because uh, I I've lost the 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 screen on the brainstorming. Oh damn! Uh, Sorry. No, no, no. Is a uh, is perfect. Is. I'd I'd like to read uh, the question to you. Should I? No. Okay. I I I saw before, but uh, I can't uh, see now. Okay, so there's one that's a concrete question, and that is, yeah. uh, is there an international okay. database? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, okay, I see. Um, no, uh, there isn't in, um, uh, in my knowledge, there is uh, not an international database on gender data and toxicology. Mm -hmm. um, no, because and uh, but I noticed that uh, uh, that um, studies and uh, so uh, uh, scientific studies are not uh, so um, uh, 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 um, there are um, not uh, a number of studies uh, mm -hmm. in uh, based on uh, on the gender, so yeah. it's difficult to to have a database. Now. Mm -hmm. um, okay. If I, if I can, um, I, I like and I agree. Uh, with a um, uh, request about uh, the gender aspects in academic uh, teaching of toxicology. Mm -hmm. Yes, gender aspect uh, have to be uh, uh, teach in, uh, not only in toxicology, but uh, in, uh, in uh, general medicine, because also um, uh, for, for, for human medicine, is not so uh, so clear that uh, there are difference between uh, um, men and women in uh, medicine. So uh, the um, it, it is necessary to improve and to increase the the, the gender um, issues in all field of teaching. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I also, uh, if I may pick out one more, and that's the purple one to the right, so somebody is saying uh, there should be guidance really readily available and taught to students 
for interpreting older toxicology studies that did not explicitly consider gender. So uh, that seems a very interesting idea to me to say, well, if that's possible, that we can read those data uh, mm -hmm. from a gender perspective, mm -hmm. is that, uh, do you have a thought on that, Cynthia? Um, for interpreting, the, yeah, there this could be, um, uh, and uh, an interesting activity is to interpret the toxicology, the toxicological studies. Um, um, but uh, uh, guidance. Mm. Um, there are not a. a a guidelines, of course, to 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 interpret uh, the older uh, studies, um, but uh, you have to consider that uh, the toxicological studies uh, on uh, on chemicals have um, are considered when, uh, for example, uh, European uh, uh, authority for is. Um, for uh, for food uh, yeah. safety um, um, give uh, gives uh, uh, opinion about uh, um, uh, chemicals for example in uh, in in food and in this uh, occasion uh, efsa consider all the the the, the studies performed on these on on the chemical that they are um, that they are considering, and uh, so the, the 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 interpretation of of the toxicological studies is uh, always ongoing. Uh, but uh, if uh, if the study is not conduct uh, um, taking into account uh, the sex, and uh, if they don't uh, publish the 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 data. Uh, separately the data um, for males and females is different is mm -hmm. uh, difficult to interpret the results and mm -hmm. uh, have um, uh, um, and to highlight the uh, sex uh, differences or the or, or gender difference because um, mm -hmm. several studies are performed uh, preferably on male on males and on men or um, they uh, even if they um, perform the studies into to taking into account the sex they um, then they elaborate the results um, in aggregate uh, uh, conditions, mm -hmm. so it's different after uh, separate again. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. I need to look at the clock because uh, we're supposed to be 45 minutes and I think we could go on quite a bit. Uh, I'd like to thank you, Cynthia, for your excellent presentation and being ready to answer questions and discuss on the spot uh, with people. Uh, to all the participants who've uh, contributed questions and to the brainstorming, so we'll take note of that and include that uh, in the summary of the session. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm supposed to hand back over to Anna. Now, I just want to say thank you very much for joining us today. I think uh, we all saw that there's much to do for us all um, and for all stakeholders. So if you have further questions, please check our website, uh, gender-chemicals.org, or contact us individually. And on our website, you will also find the recordings of our webinars and the registration link for our next webinar, um, which will be at the 30th of March on gender and chemicals and cosmetics. So we are looking forward to seeing you there and um, I wish you a nice afternoon, morning or evening. Yeah, goodbye and stay healthy. Yes, stay well, take care everybody and I hope to see you again soon.
Bye bye. Thank you so much, Cynthia. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.